on her. She's cute as a button. She's got a little spicy little hair color um, and runs an incredible team, you guys. She, I told her to give me an intro and here's her intro. And some of you guys who are diamond leaders, especially, and are planning to become a diamond leader, this might be inspiring to you. Um, she went from a one-star coach to a six-star diamond coach elite team in one year. All right, and that's what she's gonna be covering tonight. Um, her story, her journey, and how she really leaned in and pushed forward to reach her goal of being an elite team. And I know I've talked to a lot of you guys, that's your goal as well. I'm so proud of our team. We're on the, on the route of being a six-time elite team. Right now we're premier. So it'll be a six-time elite team, which is amazing. And I, I think that this time with her is going to be super, super encouraging and helpful. So I'm going to mute my line. Deidre, you've got the floor. Please, if you have questions, post them in the chat. and We'll at, um, ask them at the end of the call. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for having me here. First off, can I say, like, hold up, especially if there's new coaches on the call here. Like, this is a surreal moment. Like, for me, I should say, um, I live in a quarantine field. I'm from central Illinois, like literally. I have woods, I have cornfields, I have cornfields, I have cornfields. And my best friend and the co-founder of my team is my next door neighbor. And so being here on Jatana Jackson's call, I'm like kind of fangirling, but it's so amazing because this is just proof of what is possible if you're willing to show up and do the work. Because I know as a baby coach, I looked at her and I was like, oh my gosh, she's, she's awesome. She's so full of energy. Like I wish one day I could be like her. But the thing is, it's not just you wishing. And that's the thing that I want you to take away most from this call. Wishing will never get you where you want to be. It's you making a decision and you going after it. Do you want to be on that level? What are you going to do to make it happen? And that's what I really, really, really want you to think about when you listen to what I have to say tonight. I'm going to be emotional. I'm going to share my heart. If you will notice, I am very passionate about everything like this. Like I bleed blue like nobody's business. Um, my coaching, my health and fitness journey literally started four years ago. Um, I was a young mom. Me and my husband decided we want to have kids back to back to back. Like that was the plan the whole time. Um, but I've always been an overachiever. I've always been Enneagram three. Like I'm a Ruby personality. I love doing all the things from the age of 13. I had a job, like multiple jobs, working hard to pay for all my things, like take care of myself. And so when I got married and we had kids and then I was at home and it was like, <laughs> this is what I dreamed. Like, this is what I dreamed of. I love my baby so much, but this is what I was wait like this is what I was dream dreaming of every single day. This is what this is it. I just wake up and I wipe butts and I wipe noses and then I go to bed and this is it. And I just sat there and like does anyone else have that mean girl in their head that just says all these terrible things? These things that you never would admit out loud. These things that you would never say to your daughter or your best friend literally these terrible things that you just have locked inside you. Cause that's where I was. I didn't realize it at the time because I had two kids under like the, I had two kids, one and two, and I was pregnant with my third and I, I was not pregnant with my third at this time. Sorry. It kind of all blurs together, but it's all part of my story. I had two, and I just sat there in self-hatred pretty much like we're just gonna be honest looking back now i can tell i was suffering from postpartum at the time i didn't know it like i just thought i was a failure at a mom because my husband's out working so hard i'm supposed to be a stay-at-home mom taking care of my house and having a warm meal on the table when he gets home and i was doing none of that i was barely surviving with these kids i was crying more than they were like i just was not good at being a mom and so the fulfillment level that i expected to have was not it just wasn't there. Not because I didn't love my kids, but because I didn't feel worthy in my role. And because that mean girl got in my head and told me all these terrible things that now I know are untrue. But one of the things that I told myself is, well, if you lose weight, he's going to love you. Like he's going to, all these things. Newsflash, he never didn't love me. He always loved me. I didn't love me, but I didn't know that. So my goal going into this whole thing was to lose 20 pounds. And my coach told me I had to buy those shakes. And I told her, I'm not doing that. Like, no, 
So I did two rounds of 21 day fix that I found on Amazon half-assed them and I half-assed got results. I still lost. The first time I lost 10 pounds, second time I lost nine pounds. I did not take any before and after pictures. Don't make that mistake. Please don't make that mistake. Take all your pictures. But I was too ashamed to even do that first step. Um, and so push comes to shove. I kept giving up on myself. I just was like, oh, well, Monday through Friday, this is a Monday through Friday thing and I'm just going to be okay with it. But the thing was, I wasn't actually changing anything on the inside. And so finally, I saved up money because my husband was like, I am not paying for you to have someone help you lose weight. That's just not going to happen. So I saved up. And I said, oh, you want to tell me I can't? You watch me. I'm going to. And I saved up the money and I did the challenge pack. And I told her, like, I'm going to cancel after 30 days. I might even return it. It's fine. Everything's okay. Like. I just need to be in this group. I need somebody else pushing me because I can't push my throat. Killed it. I found happiness. Like I, like I'm competitor. Like it's just who I am. So having other people there to be like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. It pushed me in the process. I found something outside of my children that I could call mine. And that's what I was missing the whole time. Something for me. And so, you know, I ran out of shakes. The challenge group ended. I got plugged into her next group, but I didn't have any shakes. It was probably a week and a half after I ran out. My husband, bless his soul. He walks in the house and like, it, everybody's on eggshells. Like it's, you can cut the tension with a knife because I am just so anxious and angry and frustrated. And he looks at me and he's like, uh, so have you been uh, <laughs> drinking your shakes lately? I'm like, no, I can't afford those I don't have the money for those I ran out of them and he's like I think we need to fit them into the budget and that was the entryway for me not even of course my coach told me I would be an amazing coach but it wasn't until I realized the effect that it had what I was doing had on my personality and the way I was treating others for me to take that chance on myself so she signed me up as a discount coach I told her I absolutely will not ever be a coach <laughs> and Look at where I'm at now. Um, she challenged me, like, just share your progress pictures. You just did this one group and you had amazing results. Just share it. So I did. And so, of course, then I had friends who wanted to help me because I was one of those crazy moms who just shared pictures of my kids. And so, well, guess what? You have other stay-at-home moms who share pictures of their kids. And so we can relate. And so just by helping my warm market every month by sharing my before and after pictures and just, just my life, I was able to help people. And I was hitting success club regularly. My coach asked, my coach told me like, you hit success club. That's what you do. That's what I did. But the thing is I never did anything extra. I was just hitting success club, doing the things I was excited because I had money. I could go get my, my hair done or my nails done. I could buy stuff at Walmart without feeling guilty. I had this extra money that I didn't feel like I was taking from my husband. I didn't feel like a burden anymore. I was able to care for myself. And then this is where it's going to get emotional. But in order to get to where we're going, I have to share this with you because it's so important in one of the biggest parts of coaching. I knew I wanted to, to do more with coaching, but I didn't really know how to get there. I'd lost the 20 pounds. That was not a big deal. And I felt good. I was comfortable. And then so once I already lost my 20 pounds, well, then what? Like, I mean, okay, well, I'll have more pizza. I'll have more ice cream. Like, I'm just going to enjoy life because I feel good. But with that, you start slacking when you don't have something that's pushing you you just kind of sit back and you know the old saying like if you're not growing you're dying well i mean it just it's the same in your coaching business if you're not growing your business you're just sitting here stagnant on top of water like doing not a damn thing and so that's where i was at in my business i was hitting success club that's no big deal i would hit success club and then i would coast the rest of the month not doing anything extra that's fine it's it is what it is that's not what I wanted to be. And I knew that. I just wasn't doing anything to change it. And so in order to be a stay-at-home mom, my husband has to work hard. He has a very demanding job. He's in construction. He makes good money. But with that, if he's not at work, he does not get paid. If he does not get paid, we do not pay for our house. We do not pay for our groceries. We do not pay for our bills. So wow, it was awesome that I'm able to stay home because if I got a job, let's just be honest, I couldn't pay, for, I couldn't afford daycare at this time. We had three kids, a newborn and then two toddlers. Um, my, the entire first year of my business was 
built while I was pregnant. Just let me tell you that. Um, so don't let any excuses get in the way. But we're skipping over that part because that's not really the important part. Um, so my middle child is the biggest daddy's boy you will ever find. Like he loves me so much, but he's so cute. He'll look at me and say, mom, I just love dad way more. I'm like, bless your heart. Okay. I, I get it. I get it. So in order for my husband to pay for us to live, essentially, um, he had to work long, daunting hours. He drives an hour to work and our home each day. Um, he works in a refinery. So what they do is they shut down parts of the refinery at a time to work on it. And that means there's extra overtime in that part while they're fixing it. So for him, he would work nights so that he would at least be able to see us for 30 minutes a day. If he worked days, then he would be, he would leave before the kids wake up and he would not get home till after the kids were in bed. So he switched his hours around to work nights. Lucky for us, it's a two hour raise. Um, but that guaranteed that we could see each other for 30 minutes a day. And you may be like, like, that's it? No, literally 30 minutes a day was it. And there was one specific turnaround that was 90 days long. So think 13 hour nights, seven days a week with an hour drive there and an hour drive back. That was hard. It was hard for a mom. Like I was like, I did not sign up for this shit. Like I signed up to be married, not to be single. Like, I don't know what's going on here, but I don't like it. Um, but this specific one, my middle child, again, the daddy's boy for 90 days straight, I had to tuck his brothers into bed, get them situated and sit on the couch with him in my arms as he cried in his, he screamed for his dad because that's all he wanted. He just wanted his dad because 30 minutes a day, that's, that's nothing. His dad sacrificed so much, missed out on the first words, first steps, first, all the things. If you can imagine a sacrifice of any kind, he did it. And so for 90 days straight, I rocked my child while he just cried for his dad. And it was in that moment when I was like, this is not the life that you signed up for. Like, what the hell? Like, this cannot be, this can't be it. So just like with my weight loss, I had to hit rock bottom with my life. Like, this isn't what I pictured. This isn't what it's supposed to be. And I, I just told myself, you have a business. Like, why aren't you doing something with it? You got to figure something out. Like, let's, let's do something. And the very next day, if it wasn't a God thing, I don't know what it is, but the very next day I got on social media. Cause what do stay at home moms do? Like, I mean, you go to social media to try and find somebody to talk to. Right. Um, and a friend, I don't know the girl now, but I can see her picture clearly. She was standing there washing her dishes and you know how you always have the window over the sink? She's looking out the window and there's a picture of that. And outside her window is her husband playing basketball with her child. And she said, this is the best part of my day, seeing them make these memories. And I told myself, my kids are never going to get these memories. Like, there's never going to be a time where they get to do this with their dad if we keep living this life the way we're living. And so I told myself, quit being a jackass and do something like you own a business, own it, like literally own it. And so I was like, all right, I don't know how to do this. I don't really know what's going on. Like my upline just does challenge groups. So she never taught me how to be a leader leader, but I'm going to be honest. If I was waiting for my, for my coach to be a leader leader or to reach her goals, whatever they may be compared to mine, I would still be way down here. I decided that I wanted my life to be more and I was going to own up to that. And so in that moment I said, okay, this is it. And I went downstairs that evening after I put the kids to bed and I got a piece of paper, got a piece of paper and I wrote retire Kinney 2019. Let me just, just explain a little bit because my husband, he's very much like me too. He is a Ruby personality. He's a hard worker. Um, he's never going to not work. I'll just say that right now, but retire, maybe not have been the right word, but you know what it did? I called my shot and I hung it up for the world to see. And I posted it on social media. <laughs> Literally, I had people being like, you're cute. You're cute. You're going to retire your husband by selling weight loss shakes. This is a door. <laughs> I'm excited for you. Like literally they were mocking me. I know that, but I didn't care at this point because I had hit rock bottom in my life. I, I had kids, I had a husband, but this was not the life that I pictured. We're not making the memories. We're not smiling. I'm not even talking to my husband. Literally. 
because we never see each other. And so I decided to take ownership of my business and do something about it. And I hung it up and I made a game plan of some sort. Okay, we're just gonna keep working. I'm not gonna stop a success club now. I'm just gonna keep going. And I failed forward a whole lot. Um, and then my best friend, of course, she was joining me along this time, like just for the weight loss, all the stuff. And she was sharing organically just her story. And together we built up to a one-star team, still not knowing what the hell we were doing. And so anyways, I was able to get to NLC. If you have the opportunity to get there, get your ass there. If you are a diamond right now, you better be one star like yesterday and get your ass there. If you're even pushing for diamond, you better be pushing for one star because if you have a spouse or a mama, it's possible. Don't tell me it's not because you can do this. Like we have plenty of time left in this year. Get your butt to NLC. If it's not on your vision board, it should be because it changed my business. And I will be very honest, I went in there. I am a super, super introvert. If you don't know me, I really am. Like, I know I don't seem like it, but you want to know why? Lots of personal development and lots of growth. That's what has, has pushed me out of that, that uh, mindset. So you can wear the introverted badge of honor, or you can sit there and say, you know what? That can be my story, but I'm going to grow through that. And if you are an introvert, because I see some names being dropped over here, I'm going to tell you the first step is when you're shopping, when you're at the grocery store, look up. Stop looking at the ground and look at the people around you and smile at them and say hi to people. And I know for some of you who are not introverts, you're probably like, that's dumb. But for those of you who are, you have to break that comfort zone and you have to do something more. You have to get uncomfortable every freaking day. If you want to be successful, guess what? Uncomfortable is going to be your new normal. And if you're not uncomfortable every single day, something's not right. I want you to grow, friends. I want you to realize that the life that you imagine that you envision is possible, but it takes hard work. And I'm going to be honest, if you're a new coach here, if you want to be successful, it's going to take hard work. Girl, you are running a business. You are creating something for your family and for your life. Own it and be proud of it and fail forward because that's where you're going to succeed. So anyways, back to being one star and getting to six star. How does that even happen? I don't know. I'm still kind of in shock of how it happened. But let me share with you what, what it looked like on my end. Um, I went to NLC and I went with my coach. We qualified it together. Um, and then some girls in my upline. Uh, they were the only people I knew. So I kind of just stuck to them because, again, super introverted. Um, but it was awesome. It was what I needed. We were able to talk, you know, pass around ideas and we all said it there like oh my gosh look at her on stage like she's elite I want to be elite and at that time the qualifications in to get into a test group was to be an elite like in order to get there you had to be an elite coach so that I'm just going to tell you this right now that was my why I wanted to be in a test group it may sound dumb to you, but it doesn't matter. It mattered to me, and that's what matters, is that your why matters to you. And I'll go into detail about that. But anyways, as we're there, we said, you know, I'm going to be elite. It's going to happen, all the things. And then we walk away from NLC, and I come back, and I share it with my team, and I'm so excited, and I'm so pumped up, and they have no idea what I'm even talking about. But they're excited for me, and they're like, yeah, you, you did it. Um, and then I realized I just kind of slowed down. Like I didn't do anything different. I didn't know anything different. I didn't know what to do. I was still showing up for me, but you know what I was doing? I was leveling up my business. I was hitting success club 10. We're going to recruit because before I wasn't recruiting. I was just getting people on challenge groups. No, this time we're recruiting. Like a challenge pack didn't change my life. The coaching opportunity changed my life. So I'm going to change their life with a coaching opportunity, not a challenge pack. And so that was the mindset that we went into that year. We're helping all the people not just lose weight. We're helping all the people change their lives. And so if you come to my team's page, self-love is what we puke. Like it is, it is what it is because that's what I want from this. I don't care what you weigh. I don't care what you look like. I care that you love yourself. And so that was the kind of growth that we were having, but I still wasn't really pushing for elite. I, I mean, I know they have the FAQs. I know they have all this stuff, but I didn't know what to do. And I told myself, okay, well, where can we even start? Like, obviously I've got my best friend. I've got my second, or I've got a, uh, one of my other friends. She's really close. Like we can do this. So I worked with her kind of one-on-one -on -one, got her to diamond. She's there. 
Okay, good. We're doing this. Got it. Get a sign. I get to sign my second CBC. All right, let's get get it diamonds ASAP. Um, and then I have my husband's account. Okay, well, let's get him diamond. Well, guess what? We only need one more person, right? And this was the hard part. Like, how do you pick out a diamond? How do you even like look? Where do I even go for a diamond? When I'm looking for my diamond coaches, and I guess maybe this could be for more for the leaders, when I'm looking for diamond coaches, or you know what, even for you diamonds, if you wanna level up, this is what you need to show, initiative. You need to show that you actually want this. You have to have a reason why. When I'm looking for diamonds, I'm looking for people who want to work with me. I don't want you to come at me and say, oh my gosh, I want this, and us work together for a couple weeks, and you not do a damn thing. Because that is soul sucking. So if you want this, you have to show up like you want this. And so I worked with two of my really, really, really good friends. You know, really, 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 really good friends. One that I had before this business, one that I had made in, you know, the connections through the challenge groups and just all of this. We, with her, literally, we did power hours every single day for like nine months, literally. But I, I had no idea how to even get to five star that's what, that's what had, to, what it had to take. Like each person, let me just say this right now. Each person has different personality types. If you do not and are not familiar with personality types, with love languages, you need to learn it. You need to understand it because that's going to change your business right there. If you can understand how to speak to people, the, the gemstone personality, it's going to change your business. If you understand people's love language and you know how to deliver to them, it's going to help you grow your team. And that was so key because her love language was quality time. And I mean, good thing for me, so was mine. And as two stay-at-home moms, we literally got to bond together. Um, so we got our diamonds. And I will just let you know, that wasn't until the end of the year. You see, halfway through the year, I was like, okay, well, let's see where we're at. Let's see where we're ranked. See what I need to have, you know, happen. And I realized... <laughs> you're not doing a damn thing to make this happen. Like literally you're not doing anything. What are you doing? And it was on a, it was like a two star, you know how they have the little groups, the two star in the central, whatever. It was on one of those calls. And we listened to Christina Delgado and she talked about just facing your fears and showing up and asking for help. And for me, that's what I realized when I was halfway through, it was after summit. So it was like August maybe. And I listened to her call and I was like, you, Deidre, you are the one who's holding your, yourself back. You're too afraid of actually going after this to do anything about it. And you know, that's just the thing in this business. Everything is possible if you get past your own bullshit. And that's what I had to do in that moment. I had to stop being afraid of what people were going to think of me. I had to stop being afraid of being too much. I had to stop being afraid of going after success. I had to stop being afraid of all these other things. I had to be brave for myself. I knew my family needed this. I knew I was changing our life. I knew that it was possible. I see coaches every single day changing their lives with this. I was just too afraid to call my shot and go after it. But why? I had already posted it for all of social media to see that I wanted to retire my husband. Why was I too afraid of going after this elite title? The reason? I, I thought it was for the recognition. I thought that they were just going to be jealous because I wanted to go after this recognition. And so in her talk, she shared, you need to share your vision. You need to share why you need to let them understand, let them sit with you. And so that's what I did. As soon as I got off that call, I got on my team page and I spilled my guts and I cried and I thanked them for being that they're my support because that's what they were. That's what this coaching business has brought me like friends. I have people, I have people who are cheering me on. And so I just spilled it all. I explained why elite was important to me and my family what it was going to do for my family to have kenny home what it was going to do for my family to make more money and pay off our debt what it was going to do for our team in order to get that elite title and be able to have access to these test groups How that would help them build their business what all the things i should and so really just sharing that was so key but sharing that I and if you're in Enneagram 3 you're gonna know oh hopefully you guys can still hear me I live in the country again um it says my internet connection is unstable so <laughs> bear with me but I'm an Enneagram 3 so asking for help being vulnerable 
Um, I suck at it. Okay. Like, let's just say asking for help is not one of my strong suits, but in that I asked for help. I said, I literally cannot do this alone. There is no way that this will be possible by myself. This is a team thing. And I need people who are willing to show up, who are willing to help, who are willing to hit success club, who are willing to make things happen. And if that's you, like, please let me know because I need you. And I literally just laid it all out there. That's how I got my second friend to push to diamond with me. That's how we got to work together. Um, but you just have to be the voice against your fears. You have to shine the light on, on all those things that are holding you back. And if you don't know what's holding you back, I think you need to sit down and you need to get real, 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 real with the vision that you want to create for your family with the why, the thing that you're fighting for. If it doesn't make you cry, I mean, there's something that's not clicking there. You really need to dig deep. And when you can do that, you can overcome those fears by literally saying them out loud. Go in the team page and literally puke your heart. It doesn't matter as long as you get it out and it's not here where that mean girl gets to tear it apart. You have to get it out and on paper. Call your freaking shot. So be the voice for your dreams. And then the most important thing is don't wait. Don't be like me. Don't, I, I mean, I guess we're already here. It's October, y'all. You've already waited. So you know what? The best time to start is yesterday. The next best time is right now. And that's what I want you to do right now is take action right maybe you're like I don't even know where I want to be at the end of the year like I don't know what diamond is I don't know what one star is this is all craziness do you want this or not you got to show up for the life that you want it doesn't matter what the ranks are if you work this business if you show up for your goals all that's gonna fall in place like if you're showing up for the version of the life that you want to live all the ranks, all the accolades, everything's going to show up because you're showing up for your business. And it's awesome. Beachbody has it all laid out for us. I don't know if you guys use it, but you literally have everything you need right here, right there. And it's easy peasy. As long as you're willing to take action. Is it hard? Of course it is. You're building a business, friend. You're changing your life. Of course it's going to be hard. But if you wait another second, your life is going to pass you by. It's October, but this is still possible. You still have opportunity. You still have chance. Not if you wait another week. You have to go now. And so that's what I realized in those moments is like, I had to do this now. And so every month I went live sharing where we were at with Elite. And once they did the weekly report, I went live sharing every single week in the team page where we were at, who we need, what was going on. As these girls were coming forward, okay, I'm going to help you. Okay, I want to help you. I celebrated them and I was excited for them. And I cried so many happy tears to have them working with me. One of my discount coaches who'd been with me from the beginning, who I met on social media, who is now one of my best friends, decided she was like, okay, well, if you want this, I can totally help you do this. I'm like, really? Okay. And she's what we needed. Like literally we were down. This will be another story. She's what we needed. And so she signed her husband, her mama, her best friend. And then she's like, oh, I can do it one time. Like, let's do it again. And so she did it again. And that's just the thing. It wasn't because. I didn't believe in her. She didn't believe in her. And so that's what I want you to know is that I believe in you and you can do this if you decide you're willing to fight. Her why, just in being a discount coach, and I'll be very honest, she was on, off and on discount coach. She was never a constant active. She was just off and on. But her why got bigger because she wanted to see me win. And asking for help will be the biggest benefit for you. Whether you're a brand new baby coach who just signed yesterday, Ask your people for help. Whether it's your husband, your mama, your best friend, your coworkers, ask for help and let them know how important this is to you. Maybe you're a diamond coach and you need girls who are gonna bring their best friend to this team. Ask for help. Asking for help will change your life. And I think that's just it. So many times, you know this saying, it takes a village. I've learned that it's not, it takes a village to raise a kid. It takes a village for you to love yourself enough to be the person you are meant to be. It takes a village to raise me and it takes a village to raise you. You cannot do it alone. So stop being stubborn and ask for that help. Take action right now, make a game plan right now. And that's what I did in those moments. So I was, as, as I was going live, sharing where we were at, like we're so close. We locked in her qualifications for her diamond to get the five star, like locked it in last second, had another girl go diamond like the next week. So we had our diamonds, like, we had this and then we're getting down and I'm like, fuck, we, we don't have this friends. Excuse my language, but we do not have this. We were short. Was it like 10 or 12 points? And so I'm like, Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Of course, all the anxiety, all the stress we're sharing in the team page, like all the things we got down to new year's Eve. 
literally it's New Year's Eve. And I'm like, we have to have eight points today. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Eight points today, it's New Year's Eve. What the hell am I gonna do? Who wants to sign up to lose weight on New Year's Eve? I don't know, a lot of people do, like I guess. Because you know what happened is I called my best friend and I was like, I don't know what to do. She's like, come over, let's, let's work. And can you hear me? You can now, you, you froze for a second and then I think you're <laughs> okay. good now, go ahead. So it was me, her, and two of her downline coaches. And we all went to her house and we just had a powwow. And we literally sat on the floor from like 2 p.m. I called my husband like, babe, you're going to have to get the kids from school. Like, I cannot do this. I have goals to crush right now. I cannot do this. Um, and so he got the kids off the bus, was taking care of them. Uh, we worked and we worked and we worked and we sent all the messages. And the thing is, for the past three, four weeks, I had been sharing in my stories about, you know, we're pushing for this big goal. We're, we're doing all these things. That night I had so many people message me, how many more points do you need? How many more points do you need? Where are you at? How are you doing? I'm like, I need three. Like, are you going to sign up or no? Granted, they didn't sign up, but they were still cheering me on. And the thing was, we shared it. We let it out there. We, we let the whole world know what we were going after. We were calling our shots. If I would have kept that in, how easy would it have been for me to be like, well, we're only eight points away. It's fine. That would have been too easy. Don't go for the easy route, friends. Don't hide from your fear. Chase it. Go after it. We literally locked in those last three points from one of my girls hitting success club. Another girl, you know, helping her best friend in literally at eight o'clock p.m. on New Year's Eve. Talk about adrenaline rush. And it was like, I couldn't even believe it because you work so hard and it's like, oh, well, I'm going to wait till they announce it. When they announced it and they called me, I went at my house with this crappy internet in this cold basement that I've literally been in since I started my business. And they said, you're ranked 187 in the company. And I'm like, what? How is, no way. Like at the beginning of this year, I said this and I didn't actually think it was possible. But when I put my nose to the ground, my, my blinders on, and I did the damn thing, look at what happened. Because I called my shot no matter what, look at what happened. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard work. It takes sacrifices. My husband sacrificed so much because there were so many nights that I did not go to sleep with him. Like, I am sorry, I love you so much, but bedtime for the kids. I got to go downstairs and work. Like I waited too long for this goal. I've got to go work. I have not watched TV in two and a half years, friends. Like if you want it, make sacrifices. I can't tell you what's happening on TV. I gave that shit up. I wake up early. I go to sleep late because my dreams are worth it. And it's hard. You're going to have things that knock you down and just make you think like, what am I even doing? But those little moments, those, those moments of doubt, if you just take the next step a little, little bit, a little bit more, push yourself a little bit farther, guess what? That's when, that's when everything happens. So don't stop because you think like, oh, this is so hard. Like I can't freaking do this. You can take the next step. And then after you show up, it's not about these big crazy, crazy, insane things that you do. There's no secret sauce. There's no magic thing that's going to happen. It's the little things that you do every single day. It's facing your fears and seeing them out loud. I'm going to tell you, it was hard because I did that shit on my own. Yes, I had a team pushing. Yes, I had people, but they didn't actually believe it was possible either because nobody had ever seen it done before. We're little bitty cornfield girls. Like this isn't a thing where we're from. Like that's, it's just not. And I love it because look at what we did. I can proudly say like, look at what I built. Nobody thought this was possible. Everyone thought we were crazy. I'm, I'm in a small town. Like literally remember how I said they scoffed at like, Oh yeah, you're gonna, you're making real money with selling weight loss shakes on Facebook. That's cute. No, but really, I really am making real money. I still get asked that question and it's, it's amazing. 
But the thing is, even my, the people who were closest to me, the things that I found out like in the process, I had my husband, my best friend and my mom, they love me so dearly, but they told me it was okay if I didn't make it. And not because they were telling me I couldn't, but because they didn't want to see my heart shattered if I didn't, because again, my personality. So I didn't have them saying like, show up and do it. Like I didn't have them saying like, oh, just keep going. They were like, it's okay if you take a break. It's all right. Like you can just breathe. Hell no. Like if you want this, don't let anybody stop you. I don't care if your mom believes it. I don't care if your husband believes it. I don't care if your best friend believes it. Show them it's possible because you want this. But you're never going to want this if you don't have a why that's big enough, that's deep down within you. So that's what I want you to really think about now. What do you want and why do you want it? If you can't figure out why you want it, you're not going to wake up at three o'clock in the morning to push play and do your power hour all before your kids wake up. If your why is not big enough, guess what? When that two o'clock slump hits, you're not going to stay up and work your business and meet new people. Guess what? If your why is not big enough, then when your kids go to bed or they say, mommy, let's just watch a movie or your husband says, babe, let's just go to bed. You're not going to say, love you so much, but I've got to go work because that's the hard stuff. Showing up when you don't want to, that's the hard stuff, but that's the stuff that pays off. So if you want to make your goals, make this dream life happen, show up for it. And let me just tell you, working so hard, the reward is so worth it. Because right now I can sit here in this moment, again, it comes back full circle, speaking on a call for Jatana Jackson. Like this girl that I followed and I was like, she is so cool. And now I'm here sharing my success in this past year has been amazing. Remember that sign that I had hanging in my office, retire my husband 2019. Last year we paid off almost all of our debt. We literally have our van in our house and that's it. He has gone on multiple vacations with us weeks at a time where he's taken off, off of work just to be with us. We got to take our kids on a cruise to Mexico. There's been multiple weekends where he's like, you know what? I just, I don't want to work to this weekend. And so instead we went and did something for, as a family, I'm living my dream. And not because I just wished and waited for it to happen, but because I fucking showed up for it. And so that's what I want to challenge you. What are you going to show up for right now in this moment? <laughs> because right now I'm making real money so that my husband does not have to work as hard as he did three years ago. I'm making money. I'm sacrificing. I'm providing for our family so that my middle child gets his dad home every single night. And I never again will have to hear him cry himself to sleep, wishing that his dad was here because we can't afford for his dad not to be. So that's really what I have. I am an open book. So ask away. I'm willing to share any and everything. <sighs> Thank you for letting me share. You guys see why I adore this little ball of energy. She's absolutely incredible and just so full of heart and love and passion. Um, so many like major nuggets there. And I hope you guys were able to put away distractions and really hear all of that. If you guys have questions, put them in the chat or you can unmute your line. We're pretty informal here. But one of the things that I do want to hit on because I, I know a lot of your stories in terms of the coaches on our team and some of you guys, you don't need that your husbands are lawyers or doctors or they're well established, they're business owners, and you don't need you don't have that same scenario. But what if you have a Deidre and your circle? And just like she said, this is not, I think I quoted it in the chat here. She said, where's that? Doop, doop, rolling up. I'm not gonna change their life, or I'm not gonna just sell a challenge back. I'm gonna change their life with a coaching opportunity. You guys have Deidre's in your circle of influence. You have people, if it's not you that needs to retire your husband or have that extra income, you have people in your life that need that. I mean, Kelly Batchelor absolutely hated going to school every day. It was, it was miserable. I saw it day in and day out. I saw the, her unhappiness and now she's here every day at home doing the things that she loves and will be able to start a family from being at home. So. I just love your message, girl. Thank you so much. Um, everybody's saying, great call. That's the story I need to hear. You set my soul on fire. I can't wait to get to work. Um, it's so funny, you're talking about pushing to elite. And I commented in the chat and I said, Blasia, do you remember that? 
because I remember, you know, I had hit elite multiple times and it was always my goal to be able to mentor another coach to elite. And this, this year I would love to mentor more to elite, but I remember Kelly King, she was my, that was my girl. Like I wanted her to get it. I wanted her to hit it. And there was multiple people that we had to like, just like Deidre said, we had to like go in and say, all right, this is what Kelly is pushing for. We're almost there. It's going to make this happen this year. And Blaise, you were the one of the ones that we were calling at like 1150 at night going, all right, did you sign Granny up? <laughs> was it Granny? It was like Gigi or somebody that we signed up so that Kelly had all the pieces in place so that Knockout Kings could be in the late team. Mama, that's it. Oh, it's Deidre to her two lines. I think the other lines are another line. Got a beat going on there. <laughs> no, and she's not. Right now? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Um, My internet went crazy. <laughs> you're okay. You're okay. No, but um, we were just talking about Blasia. She wrote in there, I signed my mama. <laughs> and I was like, get mama on. Come on, let's get her going. Because Kelly's about to hit elite, and we're not letting this drop because mama didn't sign. So, Amen. It's, it's the story of, of, um, of what it takes, the grit that it takes. And not just the grit of yourself but the camaraderie of your team and the people seeing the vision of what not only do you that you want for the team but also the vision that the, in in showing them the work ethic that it takes to get there so now when blaze is there and she's push, pushing for elite she knows that the heart and the grit that goes behind that and the team um, camaraderie that she's got to start building amongst her team now that she's growing um Brooke said, thank you so much for speaking about the fact that other people who love you want you to give, want to give you permission, wait, sorry, who love you want to give you permission to not hit your goals. It's well-meaning, but sometimes it needs to be blocked out. And it's true. I mean, even Josh sometimes would be like, you're okay. Like, you need to quit. You need to quit. And I'm like, I'm not quitting. Like, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to keep working. Um, so that's so true. Any questions that you guys might have? Thank you so much. Just out of the fire. I needed to get that started. Tomorrow's my last day with a four hour commute because I know this is what I want to pull all my energy into. Get it, Haley. That's what I'm talking about. I'm a Dallas girl. What else? Any questions? I love that she said, um, you guys, if NLC is your goal and you're a freaking diamond coach, there's no reason why you shouldn't be there in, Jan in February when they have it. Like, no reason. <laughs> you're choosing not to be there if you're not there and qualifying. All you have to do is mentor one person to diamond. And I know a lot of y'all's downlines that are diamonds. You already have people who are building. So there's no reason why you don't just really buckle down and make it happen. And guess what? Lead the way for your team. There's some, nothing more powerful than hitting that huge goal and your team going, okay, she did it. Now I'm going to do it. So say... Um, I'm just going to pick a diamond that's on there. Say Lindsay goes to NLC and Sarah sees it and Sarah's like, oh, heck yeah, I'm going. Look, Kelsey's going. The, one of the key girls is going. <laughs> um, so Melinda's going, oh, all my diamond. All right, now they're all calling it out. Go ahead, say it. You're going. Um, you just have to be a one-star diamond by the end of the year, which is pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> He's peasy lemon squeezy. And then it sets the path for elite. It shows you what it takes to buckle down, hit a goal. And then guess what? You do what Deidre did. You go one star to six star in the next year. So that's the game plan. All right. Well, if you guys don't have any like personal questions, thank you so much for jumping on. Deidre, thank you so much for pouring your heart out to us. Continue rocking it. What is your next goal, Deidre? What are you closing? We're going for it. We're going for elite this year. And I will be very honest that it's been a hard year for me. Like, and I think that's one thing you have to know going into this business is there's ebbs and flows. There's going to be ups and downs. You have to hang on in the downtime to get there. So we're like, literally my diamonds all quit. Like they all gave up. So it's me. I've got unbalanced legs. I'm still rocking it. I'm still showing up. Could I give in and say like, okay, no, I'm not going to make this happen fuck that. Like I didn't get this far to only get this far. 
So I'm still going after it. And I'm trying new things. I'm doing different stuff. We're doing Emerald Factories, which we've never done before. We're doing, um, we're taking Rob Pearson's like guide for new coach boot camps. We're trying that out. It's helping with the consistency and doing the trackers and we're just being flexible. And I have three girls who are right on the verge of becoming diamond. I have, we popped four emeralds last week in the, in a two day emerald factory group. Um, we're just getting creative and we're getting back to the basics. Like when you feel like you're down, you ask yourself, okay, how do we make this fun? Because at the end of the day, this business, it's not about the ranks. Like, yes, they're perfect. Yes. They're amazing. Yes. That's the goal. But it really comes down to, are you taking care of you and are you having fun? Because if you say yes to those, the business is going to come. And so right now we're going for elite. We're almost there. We are already premier. We should have elite locked in this month. And so we're just going to keep crushing it. That's amazing. So I, I, I'm in the same boot, you guys, Epic Empire. We're going for six time elite, which is crazy because when you line up in that elite line at Summit, the end of the line where they're like six, seven, eight gets really small. And you're like, oh my God, I'm a few people from Janelle Summers. Like, that's crazy. That's like Shalene. <laughs> and you're like, ah, I'm becoming a grandma. This is awesome. So for me personally, and Epic Empire as a whole, I need eight of my 2019 personally sponsored and 20 or 2019, 2018 personally sponsored coaches to hit success club eight. And then we will be a six time elite. That's like, um, yeah. and Laura, Laura, Fadley, if you're on, your name is on here. One, two, three, three times your name is on this list. Laura Fadley, you've got a huge imprint on our six time elite team. So if you're a 2019, 2018 personally sponsored coach of mine, that's what's going to get us to elite. It's insane. And it takes all of us. So love you guys. Let's do this. Let's see who gets to new leader conference. We're cheering Vanessa, Melinda, um, Kelsey, all the people who are pushing for um, new Lindsay as well. Pushing Holly. I'm like looking at make sure I don't miss any people because I don't want to be like, I say my name out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheering all you guys on for new leader conference. And if your coaches are on here, you guys get behind these leaders and let's make it happen. I right? love you guys. Have a good night. Bye.